Okay, folks, I'm here to uh, demonstrate a fly that Nick Nicholas uh, created. It's a March Brown Emerger. Hopefully you can see that okay. That's a really productive fly for Pine Creek, Slate Run, Cedar Run, other nearby streams. It's uh, one that you may not see too many videos of on YouTube. Uh, so we thought we would do this uh, as part of the Slate Run e-newsletter. So uh, this is what we're tying today. You can see the finished product. And I'll try to explain to you what I'm doing as we, as we tie it. I'm using some uh, yellow mallard or, or lemon duck. Uh, it's the same, same basic uh, feather. Using that for the tail. Uh, of course, we start with the tail first. Using red. I like to use 8 0 thread because it doesn't build up. After we get the tail on, I'm using some stretch tubing, some micro brown that uh, Orvis produces. There's a other producers of it, but this will be for the ribbing. I'm a big fan of ribbing on most of my flies. I think that's one of the things that trout key in on to see if it's a, something to eat or something not. When you have a fly with ribbing, whether it's a dry, a nymph, a soft tackle in this case, I think that's important. Um, okay, next I'm going to do the dubbing. And we're using, uh, again, Orvis product. It's Spectra Blend Dry Fly Amber. It's a March Brown, real good March Brown color. March Browns are an important fly here in the Pine, Pine Creek Valley. So once you try to get that evenly dubbed on. Neatness always counts in fly tying. So you want to try not to double wrap when you're dubbing a fly. You want to get nice even wraps if you can. Sometimes you have to go back and dub over top of an area, but uh, as I said, neatness counts. You want a pretty even body here. And you don't want to crowd the eye. That's a That's a problem that a lot of beginning fly tires have is they crowd the eye of the hook and that's uh, that's a bad thing. It, uh, you can tie a beautiful fly and then you crowded the hook and you can't use a fly. So what I'm using for ribbing, ribbing here is this again this stretch micro tubing. Yeah, there's a good contrast in the color over this March Brown color of dubbing. So I just bring it up here and we're going to put a thorax. I don't have the uh, exact right dubbing to put it to thorax, so we're going to improvise and use some uh, zonker strips here that are about the right color. I know a lot of you are out there saying he should keep those scissors in his hands. I know I should, but just uh, it's not the way I learned and it's tough to do it now. So this is the uh, Bard Zonker, it's fluorescent orange, and it's made by Orvis. Orvis produces some good tying materials. So we don't want to get too much on in one place. After we get this dubbed on, we'll pick it out a little bit with a bodkin. This will be the thorax. Always neatness counts. Now we're going to put on a um, Brahma hen hackle. You could pretty much eyeball it. And um, ideally, you want this hackle to stretch back about halfway 
from the eye back to the tail. This one might be a little bit long, but it really doesn't matter. The, the fish do not know that you put too long of a hackle on here. I tie a lot of these and uh, you get to tying and you just pick out your hackle and some are longer, some are shorter, but the fish do not know that. So I tie in my, I like to tie in my hackle like this tip first and I put them in upside down like this opposite from the way you think you want to tie this so that after you tie it in as you can see now it's pointed the right way so that it'll flow from front to back naturally instead of you having to force it that way uh, this is a whiting Brahma hen neck it's a March brown color you could get these and all these materials you could get at the Slate Run Tackle Shop and, and any of your favorite favorite fly fishing shops or mail order will do it, but I like to buy from Slate Run Tackle. So you're going to get this around. I pull back any stray hackle barbs. You don't want it too heavily hackled either but again it's it's not going to matter a whole lot to the fish so I, I'll trim this then we'll pull those back and I like to build up a head a little bit bigger than maybe most people but uh, that's your personal preference you'll see what what works and does when what doesn't work but again it's not that critical you know we were talking the other day Isaac and I in the fly shop that uh, sometimes you get to tie patterns for the fish sometimes you get to put tie patterns for the fishermen so it just depends what you're tying for I'm going to use a whip finish tool the old timers don't use a whip finish tool I'm an old timer myself though Isaac but uh this seems to work well for me. You get about five good wraps on there. Cinch it down. And we're about done. This probably isn't the prettiest fly ever tied. But I'm 100% certain that will catch fish. This uh, I'm using, I like to use water-based um, head cement you could use whatever you like I know Isaac likes likes to use the high gloss stuff but um, this will do it what I like to do to clean out the eye of the hook is use a uh, use a use a hackle put that through the eye and pull it through and that takes the excess glue out excess cement out and let's put this on my cork and see this is the right size the one I showed you earlier was a little bit smaller but it doesn't matter a great deal um, so here you go here's a Nick Nicholas style March Brown emerger that I guarantee you if you present well this will be productive on pine slate cedar and other streams where there wherever there's March Browns